Common mistakes when selling FISBO in Miami. Hey folks, my name is Chris at Houseit, based here in Miami, Florida. Today we're going to talk about this interesting topic that a lot of uh, sellers uh, will often ask, especially if they're you know, considering selling for the first time. They first learn about uh, traditional real estate broker commissions, uh, which is entirely a seller closing cost, and they you know, jump at the thought of having to pay 6% in uh, commission, 6% of the total sale price when they sell even if that's split 50-50 between the buyer's agent and the seller's agent, if the buyer has a broker, uh, it's still oftentimes the single largest closing cost, regardless of which state you're in, uh, and can really dwarf all other closing costs. So, you know, sellers will obviously think, well, you know, these days everyone searches online. Uh, why can't I just post it myself on some website and, and uh, see what happens and, you know, price it a little bit higher maybe and, uh, and give it a go. So we'll explain some of the common mistakes when trying to sell uh, for sale by owner, how you can avoid them, and uh, alternatives that you can pursue uh, so that you can get full exposure uh, without compromising your sale process while also having the ability to potentially save all 6% in broker commission if you find a direct buyer. The first mistake that sellers often make is uh, not engaging buyers brokers. So. Uh, this is something you'll you'll see pretty commonly if you take a look at other you know for sale by owner listings on any sort of website like Craigslist or uh, or Zillow for example where you can filter by for sale by owner uh, sellers and and by the way this is something that uh, that brokers do pretty often traditional brokers to you know as a way of generating leads to call harass and solicit um, to list with them for a full commission and and they'll kind of go over some of what we talk about in the following video about like mistakes of of listing for sale by owner. And we'll just explain all of these so you get the truth behind them. And, you know, so one of these mistakes is, is totally just ignoring uh, buyer's brokers. And this is a huge mistake just because uh, buyer's brokers do represent anywhere from 75% to 90% of all buyers. Uh, the figure is higher on the higher end of the range in more competitive metro areas. And, you know, the reason is, is quite simple, actually. Even though buyers do, um, you know, can start to search online, uh, there's, there's a recent study by NAR that says 98% of all buyers uh, start their home search online. But, you know, so very surprisingly, the, the vast majority of them end up working with a, a real estate agent anyway. And the reason is, you have to think about it this way. Um, for example, there's 50,000 licensed real estate agents in the New York metro area alone. Every New Yorker has probably at least five real estate agent friends. And you know, each of these friends acts as a salesperson for the industry. They're all promoting um, you know, having a buyer's agent as a free service. And it technically is because broker commissions, as we discussed, are traditionally a seller closing cost. So, you know, they offer essentially the ability to serve as your guide throughout the purchase process, which is one of the most complex uh, and biggest decisions that uh, someone goes through typically in their life. Um, they obviously want expert advice and guidance through some from someone who has been through it before. Um, it doesn't hurt that buyer's agents will offer essentially a free you know showing service where you know they can they can perhaps show the buyer different neighborhoods set them up on tours where they see multiple listings uh, in a row on the same day um, and you know of course advise them in offers pricing scheduling inspections any of this um, so it, it's it's quite enticing of an offer especially when it's phrased as quote unquote use it or lose it because it is true if the buyer for some reason forgoes their right to uh, having a buyer's agent, then you know the seller's agent gets quite lucky and simply keeps both sides of the commission, or six percent in the typical example we talked about. Um, so this is you know this is just taking a step back why most buyers do end up choosing to take advantage of their right to free buyer representation. I mean, why would they say no to something that's quote unquote free? Um, so because of this, most buyers are represented, and then you know as a result, it's quite the mistake to. Uh, to ignore buyer's brokers. And you, you often see this uh, in these, you know, for sale by owner listings you might find on random websites. You know, oftentimes at the top it'll say, um, you know, buyer's brokers, please do not call, or real estate agents, please do not call, or like, you know, no agents, please, or no brokers, please, like do not call, will be blocked, or you will be reported, or any of these, you know, nonsense. Um, line items and and you know it's not like realtors are are looking specifically 
at Fisbo listings for their buyers. I mean, if they are calling, they're uh, ironically, you know, they, they're calling to solicit and, and harass the, the seller to list with them. So it's really a double whammy. It's just like, first of all, it's unnecessary. And two, you know, in the off chance you have a buyer's broker willing to consider, you know, maybe looking at a Fisbo listing because it's the only one of its kind. And then, you know, they're considering, ah, oh, I got to sign a custom commission agreement and, and, you know, make sure I don't get, uh, you know, disintermediated for my buyer client, you know, and then you put, and then they see, you know, buyer's agents do not call. <laughs> I mean, that kind of removes your only chance of, of ever engaging a buyer's agent in the first place. And then you're left with who, you know, predatory buyers, vulture buyers, professionals, investors who are, you know, looking specifically for for sale by owner listings to prey on them uh, when they're desperate and realize that they can't sell and they really need to sell and they lower their pricing, they're cornered. It's just a bad situation to be in. So, you know, that is a common mistake. And of course, you can avoid that mistake by uh, making sure your property is properly listed in the local MLS plus all relevant uh, third party public websites. And you can do that through a house it agent assisted FSBO listing where you pay a small flat fee up front as low as $95 in South Florida as of this filming and $499 in, uh, in the New York City market. And, uh, and your property is listed in the local MLS. So for example, in New York City it would be the Revenue RLS and the Hudson Valley in uh, Long Island, it would be the one key MLS in South Brooklyn. It would also include the Brooklyn MLS in South Florida or Southeast Florida. Uh, it would be the uh, Southeast Florida MLS, also known as the Miami MLS. And then, you know, once your property is listed in the local MLS, it'll automatically be syndicated to all relevant uh, industry standard third party websites such as Rotor.com, Zillow, Trulia, Homes.com, you know, any number of these sites that you, you might have heard of before. The next point we'll talk about is trying to offer a broker commission by yourself on your traditional for sale by owner listing. So this is another uh, funny example we'll often see on for sale by owner listings. Uh, for example, you go on Zillow, you, you filter by for sale by owner listings and you'll see these listings that have near the top, um, these sellers who have realized, oh shoot, you know, most buyers have agents, maybe I should try to engage them. And then they'll just put in text in their property description, uh, we'll offer 3% to buyer's brokers or 3% commission to buyer's brokers. And they're like, now I've got it. You know, now buyer's brokers will show the property, I'm offering commission the same as they would earn anywhere else. So no problemo, right? Wrong. So this is, um, goes back to the same problem we talked about. You know, just because you write uh, 3% to buyer's brokers in your property description. I mean, how on earth is a buyer's broker supposed to take your word for it? I mean, they, you know, keep in mind, especially in competitive metro markets, uh, buyer's brokers typically don't have any sort of exclusivity arrangement with the buyer. The buyer acts essentially as a free agent, um, which is why it's so important that buyer's brokers only show listings that are in the MLS to their buyer clients because they're protected. They'll automatically and contractually uh, be split commission if they, you know, are the procuring cause of, of a sale. They bring a buyer. But with the FISBO listing, it's, you know, it's completely arm's length. There's no protections whatsoever. And moreover, because the seller has decided to sell for sale by owner, you know, the buyer's agent probably assumes that the, uh, the FISBO seller probably doesn't want to pay commission, is trying to get out of paying any commission uh, in the first place, and might not like real estate brokers to begin with. So uh, you're not off to a good start in terms of building trust that, hey, like I'll actually pay you. Plus, just think about it from the buyer's broker's perspective. It doesn't really matter what you say in your property description because the, the buyer's broker doesn't even need to send your listing link you know, to their buyer client. They could just mention the address and the buyer theoretically then could just Google the, the address, uh, find out that it's a for sale by owner listing and potentially skirt around the buyer's broker, go direct to the, to the seller and then the buyer's broker is out of a 3% payday, you know, and, and they may have done a ton of war work, done a ton of showings and tours for that buyer and, and you know, all of a sudden they're out of luck. <laughs> they just wasted all of this time because they made the mistake of showing a for sale by owner listing or even giving the address to their buyer. So as you can see, this is quite dangerous. 
Um, as we mentioned earlier, the only conceivable example where we can think that a buyer's broker would even engage a FISBO listing if it's in an extremely tight uh, market in terms of inventory. It's a one-of-a-kind property. There's nothing else like it. The buyer has very specific criteria, and that's literally the only, the only one. In that case, there's a small possibility that this, this buyer's broker, if they even take the time to search outside of the MLS for listings, that they might approach the seller, um, you know, make sure they carefully uh, sign and uh, you know draft and, and sign a custom, you know, some sort of custom commission agreement or a one one time showing agreement um, with the buyer's name and such to make sure that they will absolutely be protected uh, if the if the buyer goes through. And you know, just think about how difficult this is. You have to draft a, a contract. You have to sign it. And, you know, how can they do this sustainably, you know, if they're looking at for sale buyer listings? They can't, right? They don't need to sign or do anything to show listings that are properly co-broked in the MLS. So it's a lot of hassle, um, you know, if there's any sort of negotiations or pushback on the language and stuff, it might take, you know, really a long time back and forth. And it's just like, it's really a bad situation and, and highly, highly inconvenient to the buyer's broker, which is why it doesn't happen very often. Another common mistake that sellers make when trying to sell FISBO is they will uh, list their property way too high in price. And, you know, the thinking is, hey, you know, I'm patient. I'm, my incentives are aligned, not like the brokers, because I, I don't need to sell. I can wait for the right price, the right buyer to come in. Um, and they, they price it very high. The problem with that is, you know, sure, if you want to just waste your time and you really don't care about selling and you're trying to do a market uh, pricing exercise and you want to price it high, okay, then maybe just just you can list it like very high and see what happens. If you get any any uh, inquiries, you probably won't. Um, but the problem is for FISBO sellers that try this approach who actually need to sell at some point. And what happens is when they list it high and they get no bites, it's crickets, the only people who are inquiring are brokers who are trying to pitch them in their living rooms uh, to list with them, you know, or cold calling them to list with them. And, um, you know, then months go by, their days on market goes up, it looks like an old listing. And then shoot, all of a sudden, like three, four months later, they're like, we really, I really need to sell. And most of the inquiries for any listing, you know, even if it's properly marketed, come in towards the beginning of the listing period, the early days of your days on market, when the listing is fresh. You know, later on, people, you know, they won't get alerted to it really. And, and you know, people, if they do see it, they might assume, hey, it's been on the market for quite a while. You know, it's probably already spoken for or worse, like maybe there's something wrong with it if it can't sell. And then so, you know, here you are four or five, whatever months later, and your listing is still on the market, it's stale. Uh, the only people who are occasionally reaching out to you are brokers trying to pitch you to list with them. And shoot, you suddenly actually need to sell. I mean, you're really out of luck because uh, many sites will not let you just reset the day count. You can't just take it off the market for a day and then relist it with zero days on market. You know, even if that were to work, uh, buyers would still see the listing history, right? Sites, uh, third-party sites won't remove it. They'll, they'll see that you delisted and listed it, you know, but, but most sites have rules. For example, StreetEasy requires a listing to be off market for uh, 90 days when, when, uh, before being able to reset the day count when it's listed by the same brokerage uh, or, or seller. So, you know, for example, in, in that case, you're four months off <laughs> on the market um, and you can't bear to, to like have it be off market for three months before trying again, you really need to sell, then you're really out of luck because then at that point, you kind of just need to reduce the price and perhaps reduce the price even further. And then you have a buyer come in and it's probably, if it is a real buyer at all, it probably is a predatory you know, prof professional investor who knows you, you've got nothing else and shoot, you made this critical error, you actually need to sell now. And he's got you backed into a corner and will submit a low ball, maybe cash offer and you know, knows that you don't have anyone else. You know, there's, at that point, you have no leverage. You, you can't credibly, you know, say, hey, I've got two other buyers on standby. You need to sign this contract within a few days because that buyer knows you're probably out of luck. You're desperate. You need to sell. I'm the only buyer. So here's my lowball offer and I'm not budging. 
So it's a really tough situation to be in at that point, and, and that really is a critical mistake. So we always advise, if you're looking to sell, uh, make sure you price it right from the very beginning. Ideally, you slightly underprice it, especially if you're saving money on the commission with the house at Asian Assisted FSBO listing. Uh, try to slightly underprice the competition. Um, you never know, I mean, by doing so, you, pricing is by far the best way to attract attention, uh, best form of advertising. You know, if buyers smell a good deal, you might even get a bidding war and end up, um, you know, selling for above your listing price. The next thing we'll talk about is professional photos. So one of the common mistakes that uh, FISBO sellers make, and we also see this by professional listing agents as well in South Florida, it's really quite bizarre, especially, you know, listing agents, um, you know, putting on the market like two, three, four million plus, or sometimes even more, 10 million plus penthouses. Um, or single family houses on the market and it's crazy. Sometimes you will even see these professional listing agents in South Florida using amateur photography or you know, clearly non-professional photography. You know, this is something you might see in, in a FISBO listing usually, but you, you sometimes see it by professionally marketed listings as well. And in either case, this is a critical, critical error because you have to think about it this way. Photos are typically the first thing that buyers see and you know, it's the first first impression that buyers have. They're scanning through sometimes hundreds of listings at a time and you know that that cover photo, that first photo or first few photos really is the you know the best way to attract their attention, to get, get their interest to, to inquire further. And you know if you think about it this way as well, because most professionally marketed listings, you know, they retouch their photos, they might digitally enhance them, they, they obviously use professional HDR, uh, you know, multiple exposures often. And you know, it shows the property really in, in its best possible light. So if you think about it from this perspective and, and what buyers are used to, and they see your listing, um, what are they supposed to think if it's a grainy, tilted photo with, with really poor lighting, they can't really see what's going on there, there's a lot of clutter, and you know, they're used to seeing the photos represent the, the property in the best light and they see this, what are they supposed to think? I mean, <laughs> is it even worse than the photo, right? I mean, this is, I mean, it's such a horrible mistake to make and um, especially for sellers, you know, who want to save money, um, we get it, but, but trying to save, you know, three, four hundred dollars, whatever it might be, a few hundred dollars on professional photography uh, when trying to sell your home is one of the worst mistakes you can make because, you know, professional photography really is by far the biggest bang for your buck in terms of getting a return on investment. I mean, it's one of the most critical, if not the most critical piece of your, your marketing presence, having good photos. So, you know, by skimping on a few hundred dollars on a multi-million dollar property is, is such a critical mistake. So we highly advise uh, not doing that. Check out our photos on houseit.com um, to see some examples of before and after photos and you'll see the stunning difference uh, between the photos that some of our former uh, sellers took when they tried to do it themselves in a traditional FISBO manner versus when they listed with us either through our agent assisted FSBO listing service or our 1% full service listing option and our professional photography team came in. You'll just see the before and after and it's, it's um, after you see it, you're really, uh, any, any sane person would not want to put their market, uh, <laughs> put their property on the market um, with non-professional photos. The last point we'll make today is not being available to show your property. This is really a terrible, terrible mistake that for sale by owner sellers often make. Um, you know, oftentimes they think, hey, you know, I'm trying it myself, why not, you know, be casual about it, I, I'm busy with my job. Um, you know, I have meetings and such, I have a busy social calendar, whatever it might be. I, I really want to only show on these days or these time slots. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't work for my schedule, I'll see if maybe they can come in next weekend or something like that. Or I'm, I'm going out of town this weekend, maybe they can try next weekend. This is a deadly mistake, especially if you're trying to sell for sale by owner. Um, as we talked about going the traditional for sale by owner route, you're already off market, so you're getting fewer inquiries. So every, and, and even if you are uh, listing you know, through our agent assisted FSBO listing service, you're getting full exposure. Regardless, every inquiry is important because that inquiry could be the buyer that ends up closing on your property. Um, so, and especially early on when you have more momentum, it's absolutely, absolutely critical to make yourself available um, to show the property, right? If the buyer wants to come in at 2 p.m. on a Thursday, 
make sure you you are available to open the door at the very least and just let them come see the property you know a buyer can can usually only make an offer if they've seen the property um, you know of course you can sometimes get buyers these days you can do it through a virtual tour or something but you know traditionally it's it's they have to see the property to be able to make an offer so you, you must give yourself those chances of securing offers by making yourself available to show so there you have it these are some of the most common and most deadly mistakes that for sale by owner sellers make in florida and new york and really wherever uh, these are really universal principles and, and mistakes to avoid uh, we hope you found this video helpful leave us a comment below hit like or subscribe you know we appreciate it and uh, if you're looking to, to sell um, or buy we cover all of uh, new york city long island and the hudson valley we're headquartered today in miami florida we cover miami dade county broward palm beach martin and st lucia counties if you're looking to buy we can also help you uh, save uh, two percent or more by giving you two-thirds of the buyer broker commission subject to us keeping a minimum of one percent uh, two-thirds of the buyer broker commission can be quite lucrative because uh, many new developments will often offer five six seven percent or more in commission to buyers brokers and two-thirds of that can more than cover your closing costs my name is chris at and we'll see you on the next one